everybody. I, I started this a second ago and, and choked trying to say good morning and had to stop real quick and delete the video and start all over again. But hi, I'm Jim Hoffman. I'm the pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown, Kansas City. It's time for our daily devotion. We do this at about 1145 each day, Monday through Saturday. We try to get this in. Been doing this during the whole pandemic season and so uh, just continuing to do it. But I'm going to take a couple minutes and just wait for um, our group to gather as they do uh, and looking forward to uh, our time of devotion today. Excuse me for a moment, but I've got a cough. <coughs> as I said, I got a little choked up when I started this uh, the first time. As you join, if you want to leave a comment, let me know you're here. Would great would be great. I'd love to say good morning to you, such as Diane Brown is here. Good morning to you. Jack Dunbar, glad you're here. Garth and Cherry are watching. Glad you are both here as well. We've got several other folks that it see shows or are online with us. We're glad that you're here. Like I said, take a moment to leave a message. Good morning, Barbara. Glad that you're here this morning. <clears throat> For those of you that are here, we are going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 13. If you want to find that, the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 13. <clears throat> Waiting to see if anybody else just leaves a comment to let me know they're here. I see that we have eight computers that are online with us or phones or whatever. So we'll just take a minute. Just wait for us, folks. We've got time today. It's a beautiful Wednesday. Understand this is going to be the last warm day, and then tomorrow the weather is going to be much different than it is today. So it'll be interesting. Hi, Shirley. Glad you are with us today. Thanks for joining. Hi, Susan. Good morning to you. Barbara, Chris, glad you are here as well. <clears throat> hi, Jack. Hi, Pat. Glad you're here, too. All right, we're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read verses 18 to 25 for our devotion today. Let's go ahead and get started, friends. Jesus says, Consider then the parable of the farmer. Wherever, whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what was planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown on the path. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Because they have no roots, they last for only a little while. When they experience distress or abuse because of the world, they immediately fall away. As for the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word, and it bears no fruit. As for what was planted on good soil, this refers to those who hear and understand and bear fruit and produce. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1, in another case, a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Our author today is Karen M. Fight from Alabama. Her focus verse was verse 23. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit. <clears throat> That's the NRSV version. Um, it goes on a little bit further. Now, here's her thoughts as she shares them with us today. She says, 
My husband was a brilliant physician. He retired early because he has Parkinson's disease. Since his voice has become soft and monotone, I sometimes have trouble understanding what he is saying. However, our adult son always understands what his dad is saying. One day I asked my, my husband what was different between our son's approach and mine, and he said, our son listens with his heart. Then I realized that I was so preoccupied with household duties that I was not listening intently enough to hear and understand my husband. <clears throat> his words fell on rocky ground. Our son listened intently with a joyful heart and was able to understand his father. I began to wonder if this is also the way I approach scripture. Sometimes when I read the Bible, I can do so preoccupied with my to-do list that I don't listen for God's message. Just as I can better understand my husband when I focus on him, I will better be able to hear the message God is sending me if I focus on God's word. If we focus and listen with our hearts, we will all be better able to reflect God's love and bear fruit. Thought for the day is when I focus on God, I can better understand God's message for me. <clears throat> what is the best environment for you to be able to focus? Right? I, I think all of us probably have various things in our lives where it takes some concentration and some effort on our part to be able to focus on what we are doing. For me personally, whenever I am reading or whenever I'm trying to write, like um, say write either my daily, devo my, my going deeper devotion that we put in our worship guide for the week or, or I'm thinking about crafting and, and doing my sermon, um, I have to concentrate on that. Or when I'm reading something, I have to be in the right environment to be able to concentrate on it. My personal preference is to be able to do this with music, but it's usually just an instrumental form of music. It does not have words or someone singing to it because I get distracted by that. I'm not a very good reader when the television is on and someone is speaking or there's a drama going on or something like that. Right? I'm not a very good reader when it comes to like sitting down in a park area with a lot of other people around or, or in a, in a, let's say like a, a, you know, years ago I used to read on my lunch break, but it was typically in the food court at town, um, town center downtown. It was hard to read because there were people around. People are distracting for me, right? I like to see what's going on around me. I have to have the right environment to be able to focus. And I think that's true even for my relationship with God, that I have to have the right environment around me to be able to focus on scripture reading, time of meditation, time of prayer, those kinds of things. It's something for me that, that I have to make sure and schedule as a discipline because otherwise I can find myself being distracted by the task of ministries and the phone calls and different things, you know, problem solving and all of this that needs to be done. Um, I have to be able to find time simply to focus, to let the things of the world pass by, to set them aside on my little to-do list or whatever and not concentrate on those. And the other part of it for me, too, is, is to also know that when I read scripture and I read devotions and things like that, it's not for sermon preparation. It is for soul preparation, that I be good fertile ground. So think about the environment for you. What does it take for you to personally be able to focus on God, to be able to listen for God to be able to speak, whether it be in writing or it be for God to speak in your soul, right? For some of you, it may be a walk. It may be out in nature that you're able to do this. For some, it may be like a John Wesley who had his literal prayer closet where he would go and he would be by himself. And it was in a little small cubby room area at a kneeler and he would spend time there with God. For some of you, it could be your favorite lounge chair 
in a part of your office or, or a part of your home, just listening to some simple classical music or something like that. It could be in many other ways. The question is, is do we make the time and do we create the space where we can focus on God and what God wants to say to you and me? I hope that you find time to do so and that you have the space to be able to do so. And if you don't, think about how you can create both of those, the time, and what would that space look like for you? Because God wants to speak, and God wants to be heard even today. Not just through the preacher who preaches on Sunday morning, but God wants to be heard through God's word and through the prayer time and the meditation time that we share with God as well. So where are you today? How are you making time to focus on God so that you can hear and understand God's message for you? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Dear God, we ask that you give us receptive hearts, that we might listen. Listen to the needs of others. Listen to the message that you have for us in your scriptures. Listen to the words that you want to pour into our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Lord, help us to create that space that will allow us to focus on you so that we might receive the good gift, the words that you have for us each day. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. All right, friends, as normal, thank you very much for being with us today. And I will look forward to being with you again tomorrow at 1145 if you'll come and join me. As we close this out today, also, I invite you to take a moment to pass this on by sharing it on your Facebook page. It's a simple method to just share it, and I would encourage you to do that as well. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful and wonderful day, so enjoy some of it. Maybe with a short walk outside, a little bit of activity or something, but I hope you enjoy the rest of this wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.